sit down uh, before a camera and I try to do this, I feel like it is not yet time. Um, how will people take this when I share this? I'm sure a number of people uh, from my family uh, will not be expecting this. <laughs> channel in case you're new here my name is Hilda Wambogo and uh, thank you very much for clicking and uh, coming back choosing to be here if uh, if you're a returning subscriber thank you very much for coming back and this channel is all about inspiration mental health uh, self-care which is part of mental health along the way I'll introduce you to my siblings and show you what we do when we get a chance to get together so today i'm here and i'm here to share um, one of the things that uh, made me open this platform and uh, honestly it has taken a lot of courage to do this today i've uh, tried to beat around the bush and every time honestly every time i pick a camera and maybe want to do this i end up doing some something else because i wasn't sure whether i wanted to share this i wasn't sure how my my family will take this and all that but for the longest time ever i felt like uh, i wanted to share my story to inspire someone out there because being in this field and uh, practicing mental health i've come to realize that so many people out there especially the youths uh, suffering from so many mental illnesses due to probably what they went through and the environment they are in and all that so that is why i chose to do this that is why i chose to share my story and all that so stay tuned relax and uh, let's do this but meanwhile don't forget to subscribe kindly hit that subs subscribe button the 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 red icon written subscribe uguze to hibo and uh you read it atoka which means uh usha subscribe so stay tuned and i hope that you enjoy so many years ago this lady hilda was born from a family of three and when i say three that is uh, excluding my parents so nikiwa hesabu it's a family of five and uh, i'm the firstborn of two other girls uh, yes and one thing i would say being a firstborn and I'll, today i'll talk about myself uh, being a firstborn was not easy was not easy because uh, at some point as a firstborn you are alone you are alone then all of a sudden this second born comes this other sibling comes in and you are no longer a baby so you learn how to do most of the things you learn how to take care of your younger sibling who is now the newest member of the family you learn how to be responsible you learn how to take care of things at home when the parents are on their errands and all that so to me being a firstborn was not easy and firstborns out there would uh, would agree with me that being at firstborn is not easy whether you come from a from a rich family whether you come from a middle class family whether you come from a poor family i don't think being a firstborn is is easy because the pressure is always there the pressure from the society the pressure from the the parents the pressure from the relatives they expect you to be a role model to the other siblings they expect you to guide and direct them uh, where 
need be and all that. So to me, I would say being a firstborn is not easy. And um, I would not say growing up was was easy. It wasn't easy. It was challenging. And uh, being a firstborn and having come from a very humble background, I come from a very humble background. And uh, having, having, okay, coming from a humble background was never easy. And what I mean by that is I, I used to understand things that happened at home at a very tender age. I would tell that uh, my parent is struggling. And, uh, and when I say my parent, this is because I was brought up by my mom with an absent father. Uh, what I mean is, my mom is the one who brought us up like alone, not even like alone, alone. But my father was there, but an absent father. So what I mean is, I didn't get a chance to, to, to get the first love that a daughter gets from the father. I didn't get a, a, a chance to, to know who he was better. I didn't get a chance to have that family that is together, that family that does things together and all that. I didn't get a chance to do that. Uh, and it wasn't easy being a firstborn and uh, being raised by one parent when the other one was absent. And uh, one thing I would say, I would, I would understand at a tender age that things were not uh, the same with other families at home. I would tell that uh, my dad was no longer there. I would tell that my mom is the one who is uh, doing everything. My mom is the one who is taking care of everything. Unajua mtoto wakikua, there is an age whereby you can tell this kid that your dad is hustling, your dad is away for work, your daddy is, uh, will be coming soon and all that. But as we grow and as kids grow, they tend to learn what is happening back at home. They tend to understand that um, family, fulani, their daddy and their mommy is there. But in our home, uh, we only have a mom. Tunaskianga, we have a father who is not here always. Yes. So it wasn't easy. And for my case, I've seen my mom go through the worst. And uh, one thing I can say, I've seen her kutoka nikiwa mdogo. The hassles she, she started with. I remember nikiwa mdogo, nikiwa kitu class 2, class 3. I would... Up, up until now, I can remember and I can get back to the homes whereby <coughs> she used to go hustle and she used to do some odd jobs just to cater for us and uh, to see that ends meet and all that. So, Nikikuja ku realize things we are not good at home. I think I was uh, around class three and I think that is when my my dad left for a couple of years and uh, I never saw him for a couple of years and then something happened he came back and uh, he now went for the longest time ever uh, it took so much time for me even to recognize maybe how he looked like at some point I forgot how he 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 was like and all that. So I've seen my mom go through tough situations, very tough situations, 
just to see us grow. Uh, it may mean normal to so many people out there. It may sound very kawaida to be brought up from a humble background. Uh, maybe a home without both parents with one parent alive but absent. It may sound normal. But I've picked from so many youths who are going through the same thing that I went and uh, it affects. Like for me, I got affected because I could tell. At a tender age, I could tell my mom is struggling financially. Uh, I could see her waking up very early in the morning to go and do chores at other people's homes. And she would do chores like cleaning people's houses, cleaning people's clothes. Sometimes, being the eldest, she would carry me along with her. So that if she's going to farm in someone's land, I would be left cleaning, maybe utensils, cleaning the house, do at least a kimaliza ku, kulima, uh, na mimi ni memaliza on the other side too, clean the house to clean utensils. Now this a house around class three and four so that we can go home together. Uh, I used to enjoy doing this. I used to enjoy following her up. Though it wasn't easy, but she didn't do this most of the times. But to Kibahatika to give her company, we would go help and then get back home. So yes, that is how it started. And uh, my mom is one special hardworking lady that I've seen and I admire every day. And she, she okay, she, she never gave up. Despite being left alone to take care of the three of us, she never gave up. Uh, the latest that I've ever seen my mom wake up is around maybe six. She used to wake up at five, Ananda Shamba Kwetu Analima, probably there's some work that she was given nearby. Around six, Kukisema Kukuche na Namwangaza Itoke, Alikua Asha, Maliza Kulima, a piece of land, and getting ready to go to someone's home to do the other chores like cleaning, washing utensils, na maybe Kulima. Sasa yu ilikuwa inafanyika if she was going to a distance home. So, it was not easy. And I do not complain today. I thank God for her. I thank God for the struggles I saw in her. I thank God for that home. I thank God for being raised in that environment. I thank God for having come from that home. Because, yes, it affected me. It took a lot of time to, to deal with it. It took a lot of time to heal from my past and so many things. So it took a lot of time. And being the firstborn, maybe my, my siblings, our secondborn, Tumiachana na Mwaka Moja Mekambili, uh, I'm not sure, we've never sat down and discussed this as siblings. I don't know what they felt growing up in such a home because a lot was happening. It really affected, including my education. Uh, primary school was better because where I used to school is around home. So I used to go to school and come back home. So as much as maybe my father would have come back, maybe I'm eroding Yombani to spend some time before again I end in his errands for a very long time. At least I would be home with my mom to be there just to see her, just to encourage her and all that. So life in her, in primary school was not very difficult. Uh, because I was in her company all along. 
but it wasn't the best because she was still struggling. Things like uniforms, the pullovers, the shoes, the socks. Uh, she would yes afford to buy one or two, but most of the uniforms that I had and maybe the socks, the shoes were from maybe uh, someone who donated them to us. She would get such things, maybe the clothes that we used to put on, the shoes, the uniform, the food stuffs. So that is the other side of the difficult that uh, I encountered. Nikiwa primary school. Yes, <clears throat> life was better because my mom, why your mama nakupenda? We are her babies. Na kutoka tukiwa wadogo up until now. She takes care of us as if we are still five years old. So, <clears throat> as much as life was not easy, uh, we would spend some time laughing, uh, telling stories, and all that. So, life in primary school, I wouldn't say that it was not that, at I wouldn't say it was that difficult. And one thing I would tell you, not a single day that I can remember that you went to bed hungry. I cannot remember that. But uh, one thing I would remember, I would see uh, my mom prepare meals and probably not even take. This was not meant to make me emotional. I've worked so hard towards this. Uh, I've gone for so many therapies for this. Thanks God to mental health and the course I chose because it helped me uh, face this and uh, accept myself and where I come from and all that. But every time I think about what my mom went through. Whew. The pains she went through and all that. It makes me feel emotional. Yani nanzangatuku emotional when right now we are no longer there. Right now we are in a much better place. But every time I sit down and remember that i i usually feel emotional because i've seen her work very hard i've seen her do some odd jobs i've seen her get hatred from people i've seen her being pointed out because of probably the debts she had and all that so it wasn't easy and right now when I talk like, like this, uh, I've grown. Before, some years ago, like three years ago, I wouldn't talk without breaking down. I wouldn't share this without, without getting bitter and all that. A part of it is still in me. I'm still working towards getting better with what I faced. But trust me, I'm much better. Are much better. So like I was saying before, primary life wasn't that difficult. Though it wasn't easy, but ngumu sana because I was we were with my mom at least we would help and all that come around class. Can I remember? Was it in class 6? Was it in class 6? One of her friends, I cannot remember whether it is her or him got her a job in a church. A church that we used to go to. A church a church that was our neighbor. Fence yetu na yakanisa zilikuwa zimeshikana. 
so at least she got a permanent job uh, a job that she would attend to from monday to saturday sunday ni kanisa and then monday anarudi to square one so in this church what she used to do she used to work as a caretaker those who know PCEA Muruguru Church that is where she got her second job because I would say it, it was her second job because the first job she was doing is cleaning people homes uh, farming for people maybe kufanya kazi zingine ndo apate payment so this one was the second job as a caretaker in church so am I still recording yes so as a caretaker, what she was supposed to do is to take care of this compound. That is one. Uh, secondly, clean the church, clean the offices that are within the church, clean uh, the flower beds and weed, weed and all that. So yes, that is what she, she was supposed to do as a caretaker. And uh, to us, we felt like things would be easy. Her shifting from these jobs, uh, they were not permanent. So her shifting from a job that maybe Anaka expecting to be called for to this other job that she would do from Monday to Saturday was a relief to us. But at the same time, I came to learn when nilikuwa uh, nimekuwa kuwa. I think from from this church uh, I think she used to get I'm not sure but I'm not sure but I don't think the salary was a salary that can take care of the family a salary that could have paid the school fees and all that but we thank to God for it uh, because at least um, alipata mahali angekuwa na mka ana anaenda kila asubuhi so again being the first born i and my two siblings and i we used to accompany her to this church we used to help her we used to to do everything that was supposed to be done by her she introduced us to this work she she taught us how to do it and with time we got into it and we would do it as if we were the ones who got employed. So some of the things that we used to do is to help her.